Hey, thanks for coming back to Dating While Adulting, the podcast. I am Michael. That is Reggie. Say hi, Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Oh, that's good to hear. Let me ask you a question, Reggie, and this goes yeah. into our topic. Um, your, you, okay, when talking about God, <laughs> what exactly do you believe? ah you really try to get me in trouble aren't you well because i always make the joke that you don't believe in god it's it's true uh i do believe there is a connecting force that aligns everyone and everything in the universe uh the judo christian god i do not believe in uh whatsoever There's no not some guy in the sky who's sitting there judging us and stuff like that. Uh, I just think it's a spiritual energy connective force, you know, that things that can't be explained. Like I said, I I work in the science industry and some of the what well, the space industry and some of the marvels or some of the pictures that we see from the telescopes and stuff like that makes me hard pressed not to believe there's not something is just not the way that we imagine it because you know humans are very self-centered narcissistic bastards who wants to fashion everything in their likeness and yeah about that it just sums it up okay and i guess since i asked the question i'll answer it as well um i grew up um church of god in christ um holiness all of that stuff and then it continued um, after I moved from Ohio down to Atlanta. At one point, I was the person who was going to church twice on Sunday, Tuesday, mm-hmm. Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and I was learned. I I was taught that you know if you didn't worship a certain way, you were going to hell. <laughs> um, my thoughts have evolved. I still believe in God. I definitely believe in God. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, and it's a little bit more well well let me not compare myself to other people but yeah that's my belief structure structure what i the the biggest change from then to now is that i've learned to embrace other doctrine other religions and i've embraced more of a spirituality more so than being tied to a certain religion, especially when you look at religions and how they manipu- manipulate things to their liking. Yeah, manipulate their favors, them, yeah. them. And what it comes mm-hmm. down to for me is at my core and at the core of all religions, um, you are supposed to do right by people, try to help your fellow man and all of that good stuff. I figure if I abide by those tenets, I believe that whatever side God comes down on, I'll be on the right side because you can debate Muslim, Christian, Buddhism, Hinduism, all that stuff. But what it comes down to is the one thing that's universal is the way that you treat others. So morality. Uh, um, To understand. Okay. I'll go with that. Um, so that's let's, say give, let's say give or take because you know different countries but overall a universal morality of reciprocation and doing it to others as you wish them to do it to you, you know that stuff yeah, doing yeah. to others like you would have them doing to you yes and so both myself and Reginald because if you don't know from all these podcasts we're both black and <laughs> for real I know right <laughs> and with us being black um, you know that most black people believe have similar beliefs. And if you stray from those beliefs, then you are seen as some kind of outcast or something like that, an outlier, not an outcast, but an outlier. No, a, a, a fucking heathen. You can say it, a fucking heathen. <laughs> I, am, I am the heathen, yes. Well, I'm not claiming that. But damn um, pagan, <laughs> damn pagan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going with any of that. But what's interesting about it, and the reason that we bring it up today is because what I'm finding more and more today 
in dating, especially on apps and things like that, obviously reli- your spirituality is going to come up. And yes. on a lot of these apps, true. yeah, and a lot of these apps, um, they specifically ask about what your beliefs are. Um, and so I have come into conflict with several women that are Christians. And if you don't follow Christianity um, specifically, then they can't rock with you. And when, you know, when I hear somebody say that, I still reach out to them um, just because I'm interested in hearing like what that means to them because, you know, it can mean different things to different people. And so when I had a conversation with one woman, um, she was like, this is what I do. This is who I am. (laughs) Um, And I want a man to walk in faith with me, which I respect and appreciate. So I ask, as I do with everyone, what does that look like to you? And they tell me, well, I want a man to go to church with me. I want a man to lead me in prayer. I want us to walk together in Christ. And they mentioned specifically Christ. And I want the man to lead, lead us as a family in that. So what it comes down to me is what you're saying is um, <clears throat> you want a man that worships the way that you do and you won't accept any other kind of way. Because one of the things that I presented was, okay, I haven't been to church in a couple years. And part of the reason for my not having been to church for a couple of years is because, well, all the time that I spent in church, like I just went over um, a few minutes ago, twice on Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. And when I go to you church- made, You made your quota. Well, I don't even know if it's, I don't even think it's a quota, but what it is, is that it's okay. <laughs> you haven't been to church in a minute. I haven't been to church in a minute, but when I started going back as an adult, one of the things that I found out was that it was like the same thing that I left when I was a teenager. It's like, I am amazed that at 50 and I was going to church, um, say I was going to church in my forties. I was amazed that I can still walk into churches and when the choir sings, I can still sing the same songs that they were singing back when I was in high school. I am amazed that when I go into churches today um, and the pastor gets up and gives a sermon, he delivers it in the same way that he did when I was in high school and so on and so forth. Even the order of the service or services are the same way. Now they have these like nouveau types of um, churches that are springing up that are catering to younger people where it's like more loose and all of that stuff. But still, when it comes down to it, it's the same way. So it's like, not necessarily that I've met a quota and I know you were joking about that, but what's interesting about it is I need new information. I need something new. I need like, if you're going to like just have me go and play the same message for me over and over and over again, I don't really understand what the purpose of that is. So the conversation that I I have with women sometimes is like, okay, I went through all of this. That's one of my issues. Another one of my issues is that you do realize that Christianity specifically was taught to slaves to keep them in check. So I don't really think it's like unfair to question that or embrace um, other ideologies. And the thing about it is um, most people just (laughs) pretty much, well, most, most of the women that I had these conversations with, they pretty much just damn me to hell. And it's like, no. (laughs) He did. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, I don't think you get it. Um, I don't think you get what I'm saying because I definitely am not thinking I'm going to hell. And then other people, other women that I've spoken to about it in, in, in the dating environment, they'll nod and they'll be like, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I can't mess with you because this is how I was raised and this is how it goes. 
And it's like, okay, um, you are set on that. And, and I don't want to seem like a hypocrite on this because to that point, if I come across a profile and I see that a woman is an atheist, I can't mess with her. Um, even if a woman is an agnostic, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to mess with her. Why on the agnostic part? Um, because and correct me if I'm wrong on the definition, but um, an oh, agnostic you know is am. someone. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> an agnostic is someone who is like, there might be a god, there might not be a god. I'm open if there is one, but you know, I'm not kind of holding out hope for it. That's kind of the way that I view agnostics. Tell me I'm wrong, or are you looking it up? Oops. A person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or anything beyond material phenomena. A person who, cl who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. Yeah. Okay, that's what they I said. They're very, they're very ambivalent, yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, cool, I got that right. Yeah, so it's like... I, Circle goes a square. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if... um I don't... I even avoid that because I want you to believe in something. I just don't necessarily have it, my finger on what it is. But okay. Uh -huh. I have another, rid of me this, Batman. What about uh, a woman who doesn't believe that there's an external presence like that, but the God is within you, so to speak? You know, because there are, there are some, actually Buddhism does this too, the spiritual aspect that you are the God for this, because you're part, well, it's kind of sort of how I did mine, but you, you, Kind of how I said, mine, you're interconnected with everything and everything is you. Yeah, or, or like five percenters who are like the black man is God. Um, see, they, see they, there you go. See, all we got, all we got, all we got to throw a bee pie at somebody. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On that one, I really don't know. If it was something like that, um, I need more information to know what they mean by that. Um, because to a certain extent, in every religion, every doctrine or whatever, God resides in us anyway. True. So that's really my point. Yeah. 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 So that's one thing. But still, I believe and the person that I want to be with should have a belief in in a pre in a being. Um, as weird as that sounds to actually say out loud. But yeah. But the thing about it is with me, I wouldn't, besides the agnostic or the atheist, um, if they were, if they follow some other kind of doctrine, spirituality or whatever it is, I don't know that I'd dismiss them. Uh, my whole thing is how they act. Um, because my thing is this, when I have these conversations with these women, because as you know, Reggie, everybody knows, there are people that are at the club on Saturday and at church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's supposed to qualify them to be a good Christian. Um, what about the person that volunteers? I was like, me, myself, if we're talking about, let's say, Thanksgiving service or sunrise service or for Easter or whatever like that, if you gave me the option of going to church or going to a feed the homeless thing, I would think that the feed the homeless thing would be more God-like than going to the church. Or Christ-like. Well, going back to going back to what you said before, you want a man who walked in Christ. Right, right, That's right. what Christ would do. Okay. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, when I presented that, um, it was like, yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, I get that, but there still seemed to be like some kind of hesitance, like some like a but, but the but didn't come. And so what it, what it came, I know, but the but didn't come. The but um, didn't come. <laughs> but what it came down to for me was it wasn't just a matter of um, um, uh, following that religion. It's not necessarily about identifying yourself as a Christian, because I get the impression that if I was like, yes, I am a Christian, that these same women would be like, well, do you go to church? Nah, I ain't been to church, but I'm a Christian. 
Well, you, you're, not, you're not a real Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually, I've actually had women tell me that, um, yeah, well, I want a man to go to church. If you don't go to church. So it's not just your belief system. It's that you have to do it in the exact way that they want you to do it. Okay. Which, which I guess I understand. I mean, if that's what you want to hold out for, that's cool. But I just find it interesting and limiting um, in the sense that, you know, a pr- you negate what a person can offer you or what a person actually does outside of the church because you, because being in the church matters that much to you. True that. I have a, a story to tell about this situation uh, because of, I was not necessarily as raised in the church as you were, but you know, my family are, were original church founders and stuff like that. So I went through all that rigmarole and stuff like that. Uh, I remember having coming back, it was dating my wife and I asked similar question. I said, and I quote, because our family is, is, is in Christ and stuff like that. And, you know, so this conversation had to come up. I was like, so who would you rather have? A very strictly moral man who abides by the beliefs of reciprocity, abides by the beliefs that, you know, do unto others as you wish them to do, or the platinum rule. That's the golden rule, the platinum rule. Do unto others more than you would do unto yourself. That's a, either higher. Mm-hmm. But he does, he's not a Christian. He's not a Christian. Or someone who claims they are a Christian and they go to church, but they're not living, quote unquote, in the true spirit of what Christ is, using your example as going to church versus doing a Christ-like thing and going to feed the homeless or going to see kids in cancer therapy and stuff like that, giving back the love, so to speak, but giving the faith that they're going to be okay. And her answer was telling at first because she stumbled. Yeah, She stumbled. And, you know, be Reggie being what Reggie is, the brow beating started. And I, <laughs> so I, the litany of questions happened. Okay, why are you stumbling? And it's just like, she's, well, I need to, she said the, the exact thing that they must have a Q script that goes around with women, Christian women that said, well, you need to go to church. And I said, but wait a minute, but if he's not, if he's a hypocrite, he's drinking, he's being you. And all thing he's doing is in there once in a while, picking up the Bible, reading it, and going to church. He's not really being a Christian because he's not living in Christ, so to speak. But the moral man who is representing Christ in actions, but just doesn't believe in that particular doctrine, you're not going to give him the time of day. And she she struggled with that for a minute. She yeah. really struggled with that for a minute. And I was, it blew my mind. just like, you know, I was like, I don't understand that at all. <laughs> you take the immoral man, but the one who calls himself Christ-like, but not the moral man who believes in other doctrines and spiritual spiritual systems. I said, that's the dumbest shit I heard in my life. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing about it with me is that it's not like um, I'm a I'm a basher of Christianity. I am not that. I do acknowledge some of the things that humans have done to um, deface it. Um, and I, I emphasize, too, that it's something that humans have done. If you read literally the Bible, you know it's not bad. Um, It's just the way that people have, man has interpreted and used it. So people think that that's, it it makes Christianity look bad, but it's not for Christianity's sake. It's not Christianity's fault that men have bastardized it and stuff like that. So I'm not crapping on Christianity or any religion, but just being open to other religions. People think that if you even entertain the Quran or any other book, that that is a false prophet and you're going to hell and it's like okay and and the thing the thing about it is to your point what you were saying people acknowledge um women that i've spoken to they acknowledge that they go to church but they're flawed because they like to do what they like to do outside of church mm-hmm. which puts that much more infinite 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 whatever it puts this <laughs> Thank you. Sheesh. It puts that much more emphasis on them um, on going to church, just being in that building. Um, 
however many times a week, however many times they go. And I've even had women tell me, well, okay, um, I get what you're saying and it seems like you're open-minded. Does that mean that you would be interested in going with me? Which can I like persuade you to go with me? To which I responded, yeah, I have no problem going with you from time to time as a guest. I was like, but if you're looking for someone who's going to join the church with you, I'm not going to do that. And I was like, part of the reason is because if I did that, I'd be doing it for the wrong reasons. I'd be doing it for you. And so oh, you, oh, oh, you need to clarify that one because you, you the whole bunch of women, <laughs> whole bunch of women said, tell us, what, oh, so you're not going to do anything for me. I, you, so please clarify. I know what you mean. I yeah, know exactly yeah, what yeah, you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. And to make it even more clear, um, based on my belief in God, I am not going to do anything <laughs> um, that puts you before God. So I am definitely not going to risk offending God by walking into his house, not for him, but for some chick. Nah. <laughs> and when I say some chick, I don't care who it is, regardless of who the woman was, it would be some chick. If it was my mother and I was just going for her, she would be some chick in that scenario because I'm just not going that route. But it's just interesting to me how many women that I've met, and it seems like I meet more and more that cling to that. And it's almost like, it's almost like they're bad. The bad stuff that they do outside of the church is okay, but because they don't know you, if you don't go to church, that means that you can't be doing other things that are good and decent. It's a it's a sense of hypocrisy. Uh, it's, it's, this is one of the issues I've had with Christianity since I was able to read the hypocrisy of the whole thing, you know, or that thing as mother mothers and fathers used to say to you all the time, "Do as I say, not as I do." Type of crap. And you've heard everyone's heard that statement, and that pisses me the hell off. It's like, oh, okay, so you know, you can sit there and smoke and drink and all this other crap, but I can't do it. But you go still do it in front of me. You're not setting a very good example here <laughs> for me not to do it. Um, I re yeah, that I, the reason I had to, I wanted you to spe uh, specify on that is I was in a situation with my wife where she wasn't necessarily um, demanding that I go to church because she knew that's not my bag. She did, we did come up with a compromise every once in a while, like you said. Uh, I go, I go as a guest, you know, when we visit her, her folks. Um, the church is literally across the street, literally. And every once, sometimes I go, sometimes I don't. It all depends. You know, I go to church mostly, I ain't gonna lie, I go to church because I like the choir. I like the music. So every once in a while, when I want to go get some some gospel in me, I go. And, you know, every once in a while, they have a nice sermon and blah, blah, blah. But as for it being the foundation the keystone for my spirituality of my relationship with the most high that going to that structure i mean even you go to your, you did your bible and realize that jesus never said that church was the way to him through the god like i said go people please go back and read your stuff uh even the the, the deluded king james version that we have but i digress um the one thing I will say is, you know, from Shakespeare, Hamlet, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt in your philosophy, which means we would never know everything. We are limited. In essence, we may have God within us, but we're not God because, um, you know, depends on some people's interpretation. God is omniscient, means he knows everything. We would never know everything. So to close out your thinking that this one doctrine is the only way versus maybe Quran, Muslim, Islam, excuse me, Islam, versus Buddhism, versus Zastarism, versus any of these spiritual systems that other cultures have had to get closer to God is, in my opinion, ungodly. Because well, what makes your God better than their God? <laughs> well, a couple of things. One, um, the Bible does talk about where two or more are gathered, um, I'll be in the midst. So that's like the basis of why churches kind of operate because getting the two or more together. Um, I know, but but think about that. That necessarily that building, you can have 
two or more at your house. Yeah. And and so yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But I just want to say it's like I don't want to down churches or speak poorly on churches because I think they do serve a purpose. And I oh, also, no, no, I want to hold on. I want to clarify. I'm not speaking down on churches in this particular podcast, <laughs> but um Goodness. The, the see like your standard not no, not your standard but the standard of women that you're dating or want to date means you know their their viewpoint is the fact that you have to go to that building to find christ and that that think that's just freaking ridiculous yeah and and that's, that's why i brought that up and that's the problem and and to that point and want to emphasize that i'm not bashing speaking for myself i'm not bashing <laughs> churches and i'm not bashing christianity i'm not bashing any religion um if i'm doing any bashing it's bashing of humans who bastardize and take advantage and manipulate these things to their own benefit and i'm bashing women um that oh, the, the women bashing I, women he's no, bashing women boys bashing, and girls he's bashing women <laughs> i'm bashing the women that i've spoken to that have done just that they've bastardized and manipulated these things to work in ways for them so just to be clear i am in no way talking trash on christianity or any religion i'm not talking trash on church it's just interesting to me that when i talk to these women there is only one way and if you don't do it this their way, way then that's the problem so it's not to speak poorly about and it's not even to speak poorly about their way everybody has their own walk and however you take that walk however many steps it takes you or whatever path you take or whatever that is your walk so i don't criticize them necessarily and i don't even blame them for saying yo i can't mess with you because you don't walk the way that i walk i get that that's cool but um it's interesting to me that I acknowledge that everybody has their own walk and the atheist thing and the agnostic thing, that's one thing, but anybody who believes in anything, um, I'm open to. And my thing is, if God truly exists in the way that I believe that he exists, um, he's going to show you the way and <laughs> he i don't okay yeah, yeah, yeah. he she it whatever you want to call it it's going to show he's going to show you the way for lack of a better word um he's going to show you the way and you know maybe being with me might help show you the way show him the way maybe if you're open-minded christian woman to my not necessarily going to church maybe my being with you through you, he might show you, show me that, hey, maybe I do need to go to church. I understand that it's a risk because when we're talking about love and I've heard stories, I grew up hearing stories about the woman who dated the heathen and how she prayed <laughs> for him to one day come to the Lord and all of that stuff. And he never did. And that was a mistake on her part. I get that. But I think there is more to judging that person. If that dude is was at the liquor store when you met him and you were talking about him, I pray that he winds up going to church with me. That's probably um that's that's kind of your fault. Delusional, right? But if but as, if, I, said, as I said on the other podcast, bad decision making. Yeah, but if you meet a dude and he is doing things that. Sh things that show you God in him speaking to your point about God being in everybody if he if he's doing things that show God in him to you then to say well I'm going to disqualify him because he doesn't do he does all of these things that are godly but he doesn't do this and he doesn't do this and he doesn't go to church it, it just it's just weird to me and it's like I'm knocking it but I don't mean to knock it because everybody's walk is their is their own. But it just I it's knock it for him. I knock it for him because I see the parallels with two things. Um, the first thing is I see that because I don't date men, but women. It's like the earlier podcast we did before we got on YouTube, where you ask a woman, the ask woman asks you, "Hey, what do you want to eat? Chicken or steak?" You say steak. She comes up with chicken. So it's always coming back to what they actually want. 
whatever they want you know you need to walk the way they want even though they give you all this lip service that i want to follow you and all this be the leader no you they want you to capitulate to how they see things which is cool just own it the second part of this is the fact that going back to another podcast about poor decision making the reason i say that women have poor decision making does that is not a I'm not saying that women do not have the rational and analytical skills to make great decisions. Women have all the information they need to assess what a man is and what they want and what they don't want. They see the red flags just as clearly, if not better than we do. Their problem, and yes, I'm saying their problem or your problem if you're a woman is the fact that you think you can change your man. You can change that man. It goes back to what Michael said. He gave a great analogy on the fact that if you met this guy at the liquor store, he was drinking a pint and a half a day. You see him drinking a pint and a half a day, but you're going to get with him anyway because you can change him. <laughs> yeah, but but these women that I'm talking to that are like saying that they can't rock with me, they're, those women aren't those women. Those women are accepting the fact that that I can't be changed in the way that they want me to change. So, I applaud them on that. Yeah. So bravo, bravo. Yeah, I, I guess, and yeah, it, it's just interesting to me. And when I had that conversation, it made me think about other conversations that I had. Um, and it's funny how some of them last longer than others. Whereas, um, on the first conversation, a woman will ask me, like, "You go to church? No. I right, I can't mess with you. Good luck." <laughs> And then there are other women who are like, you go to church? No. Okay. Why don't you go to church? And then we have the conversation and then they're like, okay, I wish you luck. And why then, do they go to church? Um, I don't ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause what I don't want to do is because oftentimes when I had these conversations with these women, it, it, it feels like a, there's a lot of judgment. And oh, there's a lot of judgment. Yeah. 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 And what I don't want to do is get into a debate about God, even even if it's cloaked in religion, I don't want to do that. So it's it's not even on me to ask, like, why do you go to church and why do you believe this? I don't care. Um, that's that's their personal walk. And if they feel that strongly about it, then, hey, more power to them. Like I said, you're such a nice guy. Of course, you know, I would have done I would have brought beat. I would have brought beat the hell out of him. But that's just me. But, I'm the tyrant. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, and and you've noticed this about me. I don't I don't go that extra mile when it comes to God and things of that nature. Um, um, I I remember I told you the story about the woman that I met, um, who who took a vow to God that she wouldn't wouldn't have sex before she got married, and like a year later, um, she had broken that vow or whatever. And she was like, yo, um, because when she told me that, I was like, um, I, I just can't, I don't, I just can't do that, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want to <laughs> wait. Even though looking back at it in hindsight, um, waiting until marriage isn't the worst thing in the world. Like I thought it might be then. Um, Shit. <laughs> But the fuck, the fuck is wrong with you? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, shoot, I, 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 I guess if you dating them for like years and years and years, it could get a little awkward. But yeah, I don't, you think? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know because even you, you're the person that said that. Um, if you have sex with somebody three times, then you're gonna catch feelings. Yeah. And, and and so everybody I know talks about how sex gets in the way of uh, yeah. Stuff. And so maybe if you started clean. Oh, but you talk about marriage, dude. <laughs> we we talk about okay, we gonna start dating and we have a moratorium uh, having sex for three months until we really get to know each other. We're talking about marriage. <laughs> yeah, but may, but maybe if the moratorium was longer, like until you got married, maybe I, I would wonder like what you go date a chick for a decade and not smash. Well, first of all, the idea of me dating a woman for a decade is funny. But yeah, for, yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> you know, uh, and it's like I'm thinking about it as we're talking, and it's like it's it's interesting to me. But the point the point was, <laughs> and we'll come back to that. Um, okay. But the but the point is in that story was, 
she had decided that she could have sex. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. And I was like, Drew, you took what you claim was a vow. Wow. To God. I, I that, that to yourself. To and God. I don't, <laughs> I don't mess with God like that. And I don't even know if that's messing with God, but because I don't know, I don't want any parts of it. It's like, true. And, and so, yeah, that's just kind of the way that I am. It's like, I am not crossing any lines. I don't make the God jokes. Uh, like people, like I always say, people make those jokes and be like, you going to hell. Like, nah, chief, not me. <laughs> I don't play with God like that on any level. Now back to this sex thing, since you brought it up and now no, I'm did, finding myself more interested in this. What's the longest that you can envision yourself dating a woman before having sex with her? I mean, obviously you won't know an exact time, but it's like, if, if for whatever reason you knew you could go six months, could you go six months for perfection? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A year. Can you go a year for perfection? <laughs> That's probably the longest I can go. I mean, but but by that time, if I can go a year, that means that I pretty much know everything down to your grandmother's social security number and stuff like that. And therefore, okay. you we're on we're on marriage material. You getting married? You know, unless the sex is just whack. Which we have a couple podcasts on. Uh, <laughs> is sex is just whack. We getting married. If I had, if I interrogated you for a whole year and you still around, oh yeah. The only thing that's gonna stop us from not getting married is you just whack as hell in bed. It's interesting that you say after a year, then you like marriage material and stuff like that. So basically, you saying if, if you slept with the woman before a year, then she she wouldn't be she might not necessarily be marriage material in a year. No, no, no. What I'm saying is like. Um, I would try to, if I'm into the dating scene and stuff like that, I am not rushing sex, particularly where I am in my life now, I'm not rushing sex anymore. Even when I was younger, there were, you know, we talked about in another podcast, dating versus me just having sex with women. And I distinguish that very quickly. Um, if I know I'm going, if I know that me and you are not going to be compatible with this, yeah, I'll sleep with you and probably next week. But if I think that oh, there may be something there, I'm going to hold off as much as possible uh, to try to get to know you a lot better. Because I know, I've always known, sex gets in the way of a lot of stuff. It gets in the way of a lot of stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, my three rule, my three sex rule comes in that, that play because there's been decisions where I was playing fast to lose, so to speak. And the girl caught mad feelings. And I was like, uh, you know, I don't like you like that, right? I mean, I like you, you're cool, but I ain't trying to be your boo. So, you know, that learning by experience thing. I, it's like a wonder. It's like, I can see it being a realistic possibility. Now, with that said, there would have to be like specific rules set in place. Oh, definitely. Like, <laughs> like we definitely couldn't spend the night. We definitely couldn't sleep in the same bed. Mm -mm. Um, um, there might even have to be like rules about kissing, um, touching, mm. things like that. And we definitely have to, and this would have to be in writing actually. Yes. It would have to be in writing that once we got married and had sex, because you don't know if it's going to be enjoyable or not, or how often they want it, you're not often compatible on that there would have to be in writing that we would have to have sex this often, this many times a week or whatever, something like that. But that brings oh, up- you still, But you still getting married. You still getting married and then having sex, correct? Yeah. Because there's, there's no way in hell I'm doing that. But see, and that, and that I was just going to point to that, that brings up the whole thing in the good sex conversation where you that you talked about, that you referred to, where you were like talking about the importance of that chemistry because you can't teach technique and if you get married to that person and you're not sexually compatible to you that's a deal breaker whereas I feel like shoot um if she's giving it up and we can work on the maybe the oddness or whatever because sex the first time isn't the greatest usually the hell you say usually <laughs> i'm the hell you say 
Yeah, I gotta think about that. Yeah, you gotta think no, about no, that, no. One, brother. No, 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 no. Some no. some chick you re- you really into? I, there's been a couple of them that I know. I was like, damn, okay, hell, they even they even um, beat expectations the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did it steadily decline afterward? No. But that's the, that's my point. That's my the, point. The, the, the sex didn't decline. Uh, the sex actually got better because as I really got to know her a little bit more, the connection was there. That's my now, point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the sex can be. I didn't say the sex couldn't be great the first time. I'm saying it's not the best the first time. Oh, okay. First. I got you. I, I miss. Yeah. I miss her too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, yeah. I think we could build up to that. But boy, I know one thing. That woman had better not make one misstep, because you know how she. If she does something wrong, she can. She can suck your dick and make everything right. <laughs> True. Boy, there's nothing she can do to make it right on that level. So, boy, she definitely better watch every step she takes. Because, man. And, that, and that's, about that. that's why I sit there and sit the moratorium. If you're really serious about dating, you need to have a moratorium of not having sex for a specific period of time so you can really get to know someone. And, you know, it goes with men, too. Uh, this, this is what I'm talking about, this whole love thing. You need to actually know who the hell you're dealing with. And, you know, it stops committing to these people for whatever reasons outside the fact that, no, I just really just fucking like you. I just fucking like you. So that's an outcome. If, if you just effing, <laughs> if you just effing like them, why can't you just extend that date for another six months and, and then propose? Because the sex, if, the, if I can extend that date and I don't have the sex as the the glue i may like you but then you're my friend i don't have to be married to you for the rest of my life you ain't getting half <laughs> it's funny it's funny this conversation in the minute that we have left this this conversation started with um conversation god, with god and it ends in sex but, sex. <laughs> but they are tied together because of the idea of monogamy and waiting until marriage to have sex which i don't think is the worst thing in the world i have not done it I have not been with a woman for any length of time. What's in, in the minute we have left? What's the longest you um you waited for sex? Three three months. Yeah, and I mean, actually, did, uh, real quick, I actually lost the girl because I did not have sex with her because I wanted to know who she was, and she thought I was rejecting her. Huh. Yeah, it's funny how women um, think if you don't like them um, in a certain way or you don't do something specific with them, they think that um, you're either gay or you don't like them. And it's just like, nah, chief, maybe I want, I do like you. And that's the reason. Yeah. But but strange for me to say, um, because people that know me would think that I'm the one that would wait a year. But um, I don't think I've gone a month of dating <laughs> without having had sex the first time with a woman. But and that all, and that even depends on how often I saw her. It's like, yeah, things just happen. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Datingwhileadulting.com. Um, kick the music, I guess. Yeah, we're done here. Yeah, we're done here. Say goodbye, we're, Reggie. Goodbye, Reggie.